I, I got another folk horror to tell you about, so stay tuned for that. This is Dan Booknooknoggin here with another book review and this time I'm here to review another new to me author James Brogdon's Bone Harvest. Now um, I this is a very much a multi-genre type book. Um, I said in the beginning folk horror but folk horror is just a portion of this book. I would say that three quarters of this book is folk horror and then there's part thriller and part historical fiction it's kind of all over the place um this like i said this is my first time ever having read james brogdon he is a uk based author um this book clocks in around 496 pages so it is a big one um it is a big one um i do have to say that this is probably my first time I, I was aware of this book because I was browsing new books at my local library and I saw the cover for this and the cover kind of drew me in. It was kind of intriguing, this kind of bright orange cover with a skull on it and I wanted to know more so I kind of read the synopsis and I have to say that the synopsis does not do this book any justice. I'm So I'm going to create my own synopsis for this book because I feel like the synopsis for this book would not make your average folk horror fan want to read this book. Um, first off, I want to say that, that this is about a cult that worships this god. That This is a pre-Roman invasion cult set in Britain. And they worship this god that they say who eats the moon. Or he is the first hunter, the first farmer, or whatever. And it's like a boar slash man hybrid type of god. And it's really interesting because we're introduced to this guy named Everett. Or at least that's what he claims his name to be. He's an army deserter in World War I. And we first meet him in the opening of the story. And then it just kind of goes where he meets this other guy who claims he's from this little village. And he sees he's wearing this boar tusk bracelet and he inquires about it. And the guy tells him all about his religion from his hometown. And dude decides to go there and find out about this religion because he's really curious about it. One thing leads to another and then we flash forward because it goes to them... I think the last time it was like the 1960s or something like that. And then it flashes forward to like the 90s and the 2000s. So we get these little sprints to different time periods because amazingly these people live a long time. And I won't spoil it as to how or why that's possible, but stay tuned. You know, it's just... Then we come upon the finally the whole area and the person that's mentioned in the book synopsis, which isn't until the like the last third of the book. That's why I'm saying the synopsis does not do this book any justice because the synopsis takes place in such a short part of the book. And one of the things I really liked this book, guys. I really liked it. I gave it a four out of five star rating on Goodreads. But the thing I found struggling with was that I found the which the cult people which should have been the villains I found them more likable than the doddering kind of almost dementia old lady who is supposed to be the hero of the book um I found her very annoying and yeah I kind of wanted her to be you know taken out because she was so annoying and it's kind of weird that I would you would think the hero of the book would be the most likable character but it wasn't that way for me um it was very interesting the Eng the language is very much English and I'm gonna say that this has very strong kind of dark fantasy kind of vibes too when they talk about their their dark god and then there are manifestations of that so that's all I'm going to say it's not just that these like people have like a cult and they worship some deity that's like you know like Jesus Christ and it's not you know visible there is a physical manifestation of this and I'm just gonna leave it at that 
But yeah, this was a really interesting book. Like I said, my first time reading James Brogdon. Um, I know he has written a ton of books. I have added a few to my TBR because I want to check these out and see what exactly, if this guy writes consistently the same type of stuff. Um, yeah, it, it, it was very much folk horror for like three quarters of the book and then like I'd say the last quarter of it became very much a thriller. Um, it was at that point where things kind of got like, you know, kind of crime-ish where, you know, this lady's trying to solve what's going on in her little area of the world and like I said I found her character to be really annoying um but yeah a very very cool book very worth checking out I there isn't too much more I can say about it without spoiling it but like I did find like you know I loved the book up until we got to like the last quarter of it and I was like oh you know it it is what it is, but it is worthwhile checking out, and it's making me want to go check out the rest of his other books. So, yeah, there's that. I will have a link for you folks on Amazon for, you know, to you to check this out down below. I'm going to also, for international folks, I will have a link to bookshop.org. And if you got something from watching this video, by all means, buy me a coffee or two. I'm not getting ad sense, so there's that. And if you came here looking for book reviews and book recommendations, please, by all means, hit that subscribe button. And while you're there, hit that notification bell. This has been Dan. This has been Bone Harvest. Another folk horror book for you guys to check out. Stay healthy and be good to each other.